All right, dead leg. I've got UCLA 10th in the top 25 and one that's 10th in the nation, first in the Pac-12. Are you a believer in what will be McCronin's fourth team at UCLA? Yeah, there have been some other episodes in our summer shoot around series. You want to tell them all the teams we've done? Kansas and Kentucky. <laughs> okay. There have been some teams where I've been like, GP, you're a little too high on this. You're too low here, I think. I'm going in on, on UCLA. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna have this team top five, six, seven in the country. I'm I'm going all in based on the strength of well, one, I think Jaime Hawkes will have a real shot at being a first team all American and then the incoming freshman class and a Pac twelve that, you know, it'll be a little It'll be all right, you know, but losing Juzang and Bernard, that's obviously big. Cody Riley being gone is is certainly something. Peyton Watson was barely, you know, I don't want to say he was barely used, but he was not a big minutes getter. He wound up going 30th in the draft. He's with the Nuggets now. But Tiger Campbell coming back is probably the single biggest reason why I'm going to pick UCLA to win the Pac-12 and to be in contention for a one seed, but probably land on the on the two line. Overall, I think his experience, I, I, this is just a projection, a prediction. I think Tiger Campbell's veteran play, really smart player. I, I, we'll look up in January parish. And I think he's just going to be a top three point guard in the country in terms of production. You know, he's not going to be the most athletic point guard. He's not going to be putting up the biggest scoring numbers, but I think he's going to have a good shot at averaging 13, seven and four. Like I, I think he'll be a, a, a very big factor on a team that's got um, plenty of talent. And yes, Cronin obviously has had plenty of success. He's had an NCAA tournament level team all three of his, of his years here, which is no shock. He's the greatest coach in UCLA history uh, with a Sterling 68 and 30 record with 40 and 17 in the PAC 12 to this point. You buy what I'm putting down there. With, with Tiger Campbell, you know, it just in the likelihood he could be among the three or four best point guards in the country. And with that, I'm basically saying he'll be right there with Hawk has, uh, with being an All-American. I think that could be the case with UCLA. We get to the end, we're voting on this stuff, GP, and those two guys are two of the 15 to 20 best players in the country. Seven assists per game is a pretty big number in college basketball, but I wouldn't rule anything out. I love Tiger Campbell, and I love, like, a, a program returning a guy at that position – who is so rock solid just been and there. so he's just been there. I mean, he's been first team all pack 12 each of the past two seasons. And though he didn't shoot well from three early in his career at UCLA, he, he, you know, shot 41% from three last season on 3.7 attempts. So I, I don't know if I'll go all the way up to 13 and seven, but I could certainly see something like 13 or 14 points per game five or six assists per game, you know, right around, if not above 40% from three and first team all pack 12 for the third straight season. And maybe, you know, some all America honors as well. You know, as I was looking at, at this roster and the way it projects from a starting lineup perspective, I, I think obviously Tiger Campbell's in there. Um, uh, Jaime Hikes is in there. Jalen Clark, probably in there. Mm. So you've got three, you know, returning guys who have played meaningful minutes, if not been stars on, you know, accomplished basketball teams. I mean, for Tiger Campbell, Jaime Haikas, these guys have, you know, they've been really important players on two Sweet 16 teams, on a Final Four team. Um, and, and then you, you supplement them with two five-star freshmen in the starting lineup. It's a lot like the Kentucky starting projected starting lineup. Three veterans and two five-star uh, freshman and with Hawkes, like I, I haven't quite figured out my first team All-American ballot yet, but he'll he'll get consideration for it, and I won't be surprised if if you know he you know whether he starts there or not ends up as a Pac-12 Player of the Year and first team All-American. I thought Mick Cronin in an article I, I read recently, I, I believe it might have been Seth Davis. Uh, the great Seth Davis sitting down with Mick for a story that was in the athletic, but he called Hami Haquez a, a glue guy star, which is not a, a, a term I'd ever heard before. I don't think, but it, it, it seems to fit. Like it's the guy who does all the little things, right? He guards, he rebounds, he'll die for loose balls, but he's also like a legitimate, you know, can be a star best player on a very good team. And so when you, 
you got at the very least two proven guys like Tyre Campbell and Hami Hakez, and then you're throwing two five stars there with them. I mean, that's a team that absolutely like if you told me UCLA was in the final four for the second time in a three year span, there's nothing crazy about that at all. Nope. Hawkeyes averaged uh, 13.9 points last season, 5.7 boards. I do think those numbers will go up. I think I think UCLA will be a team that will be able to defend at a high level, but will also be able to to score because I think there's going to be a lot of point. I think there's going to be a lot of points to go around with this. Like Amari Bailey, how is he not going to be able to create? Get points on the board. UCLA ranked 12th in offensive efficiency last season, 16th in defensive efficiency. The year before, UCLA was 11th in offense when it went to uh, went to the Final Four. Obviously, the Final Four run boosted those numbers. I think UCLA is going to be a top 10 offense in the country. And I think between Campbell, Hawkes, and Bailey, and maybe even Jalen Clark, they, I, they'll, I'll say four. I will. I'll say they have four double-digit scores. Jalen Clark... Junior guard, he played 18 minutes a game last season, 6.7 points. He's got to probably be the step-up guy here, right? You figure if he's in the starting lineup uh, alongside Bana and, and Bailey, he's got to probably step up. But I, 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 think, I think they're going to be trouble. I, I, I like this roster and how it's been put together a little bit more than Arizona personally. We obviously did an Arizona episode, those two teams – set up objectively as the top two teams yet again. And thankfully the PAC 12 schedule has them playing official to that league. I just, I like UCLA a bit more. I don't know how deep the team will be. And so anytime we talk about a team that's got a really good offensive upside, you know, will they play more than seven reliably? And if they do, if they don't do that, are you susceptible to injuries? You know, there's something to be said for that as well, but th there's a lot to like. You're losing Ju Zhang is, you know, that's significant, but there are plenty of other teams we have projected in the top 10 who are also losing a player of similar value to what Johnny Ju Zhang brought to UCLA. He still was a pretty good player last season. I would, I would, I would argue that from a media fan and coach's standpoint, Ju Zhang, he actually might have fallen a little bit short of what was expected when he decided to come back after, you know, catching fire and becoming uh, a national star in the sport when the UCLA went to the final four there. Um, but I do like Hawkes to kind of step up and, and grow. And I, I get what Cronin's saying, being a star glue guy. I think he'll just become a straight up star there and, and UCLA not having a singular guy to like, it's not like Hawkes is going to, command the ball on every single possession need to get his touches and need to get up 20 shots a game. Absolutely not. I think UCLA will be dangerous because on any given night, I'll say this. I think that Hawkes Campbell and Bailey will each among them will have at least six or seven games a piece where they are the leading scorer for UCLA and having that kind of dynamism while still always relying on Campbell to be the guy, just having a veteran point guard that knows the staff, knows the system, knows how to run it, I think that's going to pay off big time once we get to Pac-12 play and why I think UCLA will be a clear-cut top-10 team this season. It's interesting. You and I do not discuss these at all before we start taping. And yet, as I'm sitting here looking at my notes, one of the things I, uh, I wrote, like, is there enough depth? Because David Singleton is really the only established returning projected reserve. Um, you know, Kenneth Nuba is probably your backup big, but he only played 6.4 minutes per game last season. So there's not – like if we're going to put Campbell Clark Hawkes in the starting lineup, there's not much returning uh, proven stuff on, on the bench. They are adding, you know, a, a, a top 50 – point guard Dylan Andrews out of the class of 2022 so I could see him playing seven or eight but you are going to be and this is probably true in most places across the country you're going to be asking some guys though they have some undeniably proven and reliable high level guys in Campbell and Hawkes you're going to be asking some guys you know to play larger roles than than they've ever been asked to do it doesn't mean they can't do it, it just means they're going to have to be a little different than, than what they've been. 